Hello, kindergarten friends. And um, on Friday when we met, I did a read aloud, but unfortunately, um, some of you said that you could not see the read aloud of The Biggest House in the World by Leo Leone. Well, that made me sad, so I thought I would try it again. And this time, um, I put it on video so that you guys can definitely see it. All right? The Biggest House in the World by Leo Leone. That's a lot of snails. Not good for your garden, just saying. So, some snails lived on a juicy cabbage. They moved gently around, carrying their houses from leaf to leaf in search of a tender spot to nibble on. One day, a little snail said to his father, when I grow up, I want to have the biggest house in the world. Well, that is silly, said his father, who happened to be the wisest snail on the cabbage. Some things are better off small. Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, a little snail just like you, said his father, said, when I grow up, I want to have the biggest house in the world. Some things are better off small, said his father. Keep your house light and easy to carry. That's what I say. But that little snail would not listen, like many snails don't. And hidden in the shade of a large cabbage leaf, cabbage leaf, he twisted and he twitched this way and that until he discovered how to make his house grow bigger. Hmm. Will I grow bigger? No. My house. It's not growing any bigger. Well, it grew and it grew. And the snails on the cabbage said, Wow, you must have the biggest house in the world. The little snail kept on twisting and twitching until his house became as big as a melon. Ooh. Then by moving his tail swiftly from left to right, he learned to grow large pointed bulges. Wow, that is a crazy house, right? Can you imagine, imagine living in that? Hey, it might be fun. By squeezing and pushing and by wishing very hard, he was able to add bright colors and beautiful designs. Now he knew that his was the biggest and most beautiful house in the whole world. He was proud and happy. Well, wouldn't you be? A swarm of butterflies flew overhead. Look, one of them said. It's a cathedral. No, said another. It's a circus. They never guessed that which what that that they were looking at was really the house of a snail. And a family of frogs on the way to a distant pond stopped in awe. Never, they later told some cousins. Never have you seen such an amazing sight ordinary snail with the birthday cake on its back. <laughs> That'd be some cake, right? One day after they'd eaten all the leaves and only a few knobbly stems were left, the snails moved to another cabbage. But guess what? The little snail couldn't move. His house was too heavy and he was left behind with nothing to eat and he nobody knew what happened to that little snail but his house faded away little by little 
until nothing was left. Now that was the end of the story. The little snail was almost in tears. But then he remembered his own house. Uh, <laughs> I will keep my house small, he thought. And when I grow up, I'll be able to go wherever I please. Hmm. So one day, light and joyous, he went on to see the world. Some leaves fluttered lightly in the breeze, others hung heavily on the ground. When the dark earth had split, crystals glittered in the early sun. There were polka dot mushrooms, towery stems from which little flowers seemed to wave. There was a pine cone lying in the lacy shade of ferns, pebbles in a nest of sand, smooth and round, like the eggs of a turtle dove. The tender buds were sweet and cool in the morning dew. The little snail was very happy. Ooh, and these are all the different things that the little snail was able to see on his adventure. But guess because he kept his shell very small. The seasons came and went, but the snail never forgot the story his father told him. And when someone asked, how come you have such a small shell? He would tell the story of the biggest house in the world the end. Leo Leone. Great, great author and you know I've read lots of books by him. Okay, I will see you next time. Goodbye.